sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. And this is my son and my daughter, and they are legally blind. My children have Labor's congenital amaurosis, um, which is considered a disease. Please don't take my sunshine away. I think I'm the same, except I just can't see. This is Derek Day. He and his sister Meredith have been almost completely blind since birth. One. This is Louis McGee, diagnosed at age five with Stargar disease. It is a disease that it targets the back of your eye, the retina. There's a spot in the middle where you can't see. Um, but you, you know, you have pretty good peripheral vision, so you rely on that. <laughs> oh, you're sad. That's Was sad. it fun? These two families are among the thousands of families affected by partial or total loss of sight due to retinal disease. Every father wants the best for their children. They want them to be the best. They want the best for them. They want them to have a better life than, than what we had. I got it when I was like five. Um, that wasn't a very good year for me, actually. We figured out that I had Stargardt and I got bit by a dog that year. There was a time between when he was first diagnosed and when we got the second opinion in Iowa where we were told there is no hope and there is nothing. And that was, uh, those were probably the worst months of my life. Initially, immediately, I cried. It was, you know, how, you know, how, why? But I truly didn't labor on that because the how and the why doesn't matter. It's just where do we go from here? I think for me as a parent and mother, it's the loss of control. Not knowing, being able to see what he sees or, or not see what he sees, I think it's frightening. Um, as it, when I was a child, I was afraid of the dark. Um, and I still kind of am. And I think that's more because I have a son that's losing his vision. I don't really forget, I mean, I like know it in the back of my mind, but I don't really pay attention to it very much. I don't think about it a lot. Um, I just like to think I'm just me. I want it to be as normal as possible. And I think when you know that, that he is potentially gonna lose even more vision, um, there's this feeling as a parent that you wanna show him everything now. The creep fell over. Sometimes I think they think a vision is the abnormal and the lack of vision is normal. So I think that he thinks that he is the norm and that when people can do extra things, it's amazing to him. Well, one of my dreams is you know, for my son to actually be able to drive a car. I never thought about Derek's not going to be able to drive. When we got to the stop sign, he presented the question to me, Mom, how are we going to make that sign braille so that I can drive? I have a lot of anxiety about safety and social acceptance as he gets older um, and his coping. How will he cope? A young dad who just has a, a, a child with a sight issue, I guess my advice to them is, is don't be afraid. Respect what's been given to them because they're going to learn a lot. We found ourselves searching for a way to, since there isn't a treatment or a cure, what can we do to make that happen? And that's how we found the Foundation Fighting Blindness. All of the money for the Foundation Fighting Blindness goes to Fighting Blindness. It's a unique nonprofit in that it isn't an advocacy organization. It is truly a research-based, cure-based uh, uh, organization that's focused on um, curing blindness. And I believe that within Louis's lifetime, there will be some kind of cure, um, whether it restores his vision or stops its progression. Either one I'd be happy with. Well, Louis sees Dr. Ed Stone, and uh, his goal in life is really to identify the gene in, uh, in everybody who has uh, Stargardt and a few other specific retinal diseases. Then they're going to try to grow the new, like, better retina cells. And then they're gonna figure out how to like implant them in the back of my eye. So they're gonna take out the old ones that are bad, put in the new good ones, 
I do like the logical um, idea of we've identified the gene and we can potentially replace the gene with a repaired gene and uh, make it all go away. This is a disease that seems eminently curable and reversible, which is unique, I think, in the, in the world of disease today. There's a lot of different trials for it. And I think they all look pretty hopeful. Oh, the rain drop a lamb, drop the yum, drop. Oh, what a rain it would be. Boom, boom, boom. How do you let a child feel the horizon? You can't. They have to see it. How do you let a child experience a rainbow? They can't. They have to see it. And the only way for the children to be able to do these somewhat unsurmountable tasks is to be able to see. And the only way that we can have them see is with research. And the only way that we can have the research is if we can pay the scientists to find the cure. How often do you get a chance to cure blindness for crying out loud? Uh, that's stuff we read about in the Bible and, and it doesn't ever really happen. And here we're right on the edge of making that happen. And all it takes is open up your wallet and give a little money. For those individuals who don't, have someone who with visual issues, what I'd say to them is, you're about to meet my kids. You'll understand why it's important for the foundation to continue.